Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new section in MuleSoft and that would be not a brand new, revisited brand new, <laughs> that would be Data V Module 4. So as I said before, there is a constructive way of how you learn things and this is how you learn things. I would not wanted to talk about XML in the beginning itself. See, it makes no sense, that's all. Okay, now we will start with XML. Uh, my sincere request is that uh, before revisiting this uh, section, just have a quick introduction on the XML in either W3 schools or tutorials point or any where that would make you guys comfortable. Just get an understanding of it because in MuleSoft, this course is of MuleSoft, not an XML course and hence kind of refined to talk about XML in depth. But eventually I'll bring up the topics here and there whenever it's required and you know that very well. So as we know that in XML, it always starts with the root element and then it ends with the root element. There is no concept of array. Like, J like in JSON, you had the concepts of array, right? And here it's not there. And there's only one root, whereas in JSON, you can have multiple roots as well. So there are a couple of, no, see, we should not say it's a drawback. There are a couple of things that XML has its own way and JSON has its own way and we have to live with that. Okay. With that being said, let's start the XML journey a little bit now. So here we have to first define the root element <coughs> and I'll do one thing. As you know that I love giving student example. I use student details. I get colon and then I'll just say student name. That would be Manju. As you can see here, it has automatically passed. I've given XML, this student details, it's starting and ending with this tag. And then this student name is this guy. Cool. Now with that being said, now I cannot have something like this. See here, a comma, uh, student, I'll give, I'll give student F name. And if I give something like student L name, and give Kaushik you are seeing this error expected is this well to avoid that all you have to do is quite simple add the flower brackets here and here it should solve the issue okay so just add the flower brackets and it solve the issue so i'm just dealing with one at a time and hence i don't need a flower bracket okay now that's how you do that now if you can see here the encoding part is utf8 and I've kept, I was just reading the document while I was learning on UTF standards in the docs.oracle.com. Pause the video. This is the section where you can find multiple uh, encoding format. Okay. Now, what if I want to change it to something else? Um, yeah, ISO 8952. See, something like this. Okay. I've just taken one brand new example. Okay. No, I don't want that. It's a Latin alphabet. I don't know. Okay, let's take this. Okay, let's take this seven and I go back here. And how do I add this here? Um, it's quite simple. Just add encoding, coding equal to that's it. And see the difference in the right part of your section here. See, initially it was UTF 8, now it has changed it to ISO standard. Okay, and um, it, it's quite important when you're dealing with the character um, encoding of a particular characters. This uh, this is very essential, okay? And it plays a very significant role, and I mean it, okay? We will keep this encoding as this guy itself. Leave at this stage. Okay, the next thing is that the namespace. I hope everyone knows what the namespace is. If not, let's see the example anyways, okay? Okay, see, as I said before, I don't have a habit of creating a PPT and displaying in front of you guys because any trainer who creates a PPT would have copy pasted from someone else. And uh, I just want to show you from where I can read it or anyone reads it as a matter of fact. Okay, cool. See this. In the XML element, in the XML, element names are defined by the developer. Yeah, element names are defined by the developer. This often results in the conflict when trying to mix XML documents from different XML applications. If you see here, the XML carries the HTML table information. See this? And this XML carries the another information of the table of piece of furniture. 
okay if these xml fragments are added together there would be a name conflict both contains table elements here table and here table now that's a problem but both it's like uh, this is unique this table is unique this table is unique but the names are same now that will create a problem to avoid that problem that's where you kind of add like this syntax is this h colon f colon this is what to avoid the namespace conflicts and that's where this namespace comes into picture so that there will be no problem as you can see xml namespace when using prefix in the xml a namespace for the prefix must be defined the namespace can be defined by an xml ns break it xml namespace attribute xml namespace attribute okay and if you can see here xml namespace attribute colon h xml namespace attribute colon f okay that's how you break it now if i have to deal with the same example over here as well um, i'm just thinking how to get that guy i'll say uh, cool i'll say namespace let us see if this works namespace and i'll say stu name space student namespace stud namespace which is student namespace and i'll say http colon colon uh mathomathis mathomathis dot training dot mulesoft dot com slash stud namespace see i've created my own namespace just like how here they have taken from w3 org html see let me see if this works go to this guy see here awesome see this okay there are tons and tons of this information and uh, i would not i would neither encourage or discourage you to go through it because any trainer who says that please go through this go through this document for reference i bet that even he or she himself or herself would have not gone through it so uh, this is the the beauty of training is that kind of try to become more powerful while you train something but uh, i don't like that kind of habit and hence i would leave this guys to figure it out by yourself because i myself have not gone through it neither i will go in my career as well okay so <laughs> cool now we'll go back here and i've created a namespace of my own okay and here i need to inherit this attribute how do i do that by using the hash keyword okay um not here before this and i'll give the student name here something like this now can you see this here <coughs> see this xml namespace and it is student namespace this is the uri and i can give the same thing even in uh, to the student name as well here there you go but uh, it makes see here it makes similar sense over here see they have given h h h h here everywhere can you see this namespace gets associated for even the key tag elements as well okay so that's how you kind of add that as a namespace okay now um let's take one more example okay this is a namespace let me do one thing um i'll take one example on xml itself i'll say variable example 1 example 1 colon uh, let me define an array of objects okay um sorry okay and here i'm going to give some key value pair okay i'm going to say id 1 okay that's my first id okay just give me a moment and i'm going to give another id okay 
now if there is a repeated key just the example here is there is a repeated key here okay id1 and id2 there is a repeated key see id id the repeated key now when you have something like this see as i said before xml has only one root element okay and uh, there is no concept of array in xml but when you get something like this how do you deal with that it's quite simple uh, let's do one thing um, just thinking okay you have to just enclose within square brackets and then you need to evaluate using evaluation parenthesis we have seen this evaluation parenthesis okay and here I think you have to just give this example one. That's all you have to give. Let us see. Awesome, see here. Tada. Okay, see here. That's it. If I remove this namespace, I don't want a namespace. See, a repeated key value. But what if I give ID one and ID two? So you can do that as well. See here. Okay. Awesome, right? So this is another way of uh, reading an XML. Okay. And what else? What else we can think of giving an example? Hmm. Okay, guys. I think I let me create one example for you guys. Okay, let me let me pause this video. Let me construct a payload over here and try to loop over that payload with the help of a map operator and see how we can interpret via XML. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this video, create an example, and then resume back. Okay, cool. Okay, guys. Uh, if you can see in the right left panel of your screen, you have an array of objects again. Array of objects, and you know how to map it using the map operator. We have seen it this before, and then we are trying to convert that into an XML. Okay, let us see how we can work that out. Okay, so let's start, and then as usual, you have the student namespace. Uh, student namespace. I'll get that later, guys. Okay, it's a uh, student details. I'm going to start with student details directly. Okay, colon, and then your evaluation parenthesis. Okay, your evaluation parenthesis. Now here is the thing. Now I need to loop over, which means loop over payload array of objects. Payload of map. Map with the help of map, you're going to loop over. Agreed? And then I'm going to say payload map um, student. student oh, come on information as usual colon and then and i'm going to give like this i'll tell you the worst part in data view that i hate about is that it always gives a brain pain when to use this and when to use this when you're in a huge stress and when your team lead or uh, architect so-called soft architects they give you a lot of pressure for you, right? You'll end up like, my God, when to use flower brackets and when to use square brackets or evaluation parenthesis. You know what? There is there's nothing that you have to do. You have to live with it. And somehow with that stress, you have to figure it out. Okay. And there's no right technique on knowing that as well. I don't know how, but you have to just live with that. See, the way how I thought was simple. Anyways, I've read this kind of documents before. I've implemented this many, many times before and hence I know it. See, I want to, now see the first thing is that what I said before, you guys remember this, there is no concept of array in XML. If there is no array, then to work with array, you need to have something like this. And that's what I've done here, first two things. Then I need to loop over array of objects. Obviously I took this payload and mapped it. And then since in XML, each of them is enclosed with a key value with the root kind of an element start tag and end tag, I added this tag. And then if you have to get in, in uh, within that you have to again add the flower brackets, something like this guys, I mean, like, it, it, it doesn't even come with experience, it just comes out of a flow. Okay. And I, as I said before, we just don't know you have to just have to deal with that. Now, I'll say F name. Maybe a lot of practice would help. Yeah, a lot of practice. Dollar dot F name. See here. See, check on the right side, right side of your panel. L name. Dollar dot L name. And finally, what? 
okay l name i'm sorry give you an f name twice then id <coughs> dollar dot id okay cool as you can see um okay why okay small n is it okay small n cool now you can see you got this kind of information okay and to add the student name space you guys know this how to do it take this student name space add over here hash and then hash and if you want you can even add it over here hash see this everywhere unnecessary student tax you know what i have to i think we need to reduce this into instead of student name space i think we should give sp that's the easiest thing okay sp that would be cool not nothing to no need to give such a huge fancy names that's it see awesome you guys rocked it okay now what else what else we can learn here now there is another concept of xml which is called as attributes let us see whether we can get okay here you are here there is attributes now what is an xml attribute okay now the xml attribute is um the xml elements can have attributes first of all what is the english meaning of attributes attributes means properties say manju manju has an attribute of making lot of training videos when he has even though when he is working <laughs> just kidding guys okay when i'm working i don't do that okay it's my spare time since i don't have any life i do this okay um attributes are designed to contain data related to a design to contain data related to specific element see attribute values must be always be quoted see quoted okay uh either single quote or double quote can be used it for for a person's gender the person element can be like this person gender see the person's attribute or male female if the attribute value contains double quotes then you can use single quotes within like this see here like this okay so this xml element versus the attribute okay so this will help you to know what's an attribute okay now how do i get this guy over here okay that's something we need to figure it out let's do one thing and by the way attributes are not there in uh, json it's kind of uh, it's only related to xml okay and there should be a way of how we can work this out i'm just thinking of an example mm let's do one thing let's create a small function or no not function i'll just say va variable x1 is equal to uh 100 i guess okay variable x1 is equal to 100 i have just taken this one example and here if you can see this um i'll just say pay after payload map here under student information i'm going to say at the rate at the rate of uh x1 let's see if this works no um says it's expected let me see if i remove this x1 okay i think there's a problem here uh, just let me correct the example guys okay okay why do i correct an example see guys i forgot again okay it's that x1 is makes no sense see invalid input because remember this key value pair concept everywhere it's key value key value key value okay see key value key value key value and here also i need to have key value again so i'll say at the rate uh i'll say value of x1 and colon x1 close it okay now you can see this see here attributes getting added everywhere here okay attributes got added everywhere now you know how to even add the attributes okay cool uh, i think we have taken a lot of good time in understanding the xml and uh, that's it for this video let us see what else we can bring up in the next tutorials of the data weave uh, module 4 until then take care and have an awesome learning bye bye